Welcome back to another episode of Event Hub's Talking Block. I, of course, am John Velociraptor Guerrero. With me today is Steven Dream King Chavez, and we have had the Season 2 update with Akuma for Street Fighter VI for about two weeks now. And while it's still very much in the initial phases, and we're still absolutely exploring and turning over stones and looking behind corners and all that good stuff, it's also been that we've had more than just patch notes on a page. We've had experience with the game. We've been playing a lot of Akuma and other characters. We've been watching other people explore the balance changes. And we've had some major events play out where the highest level competitors have shown what they can do here in Season 2. And with all of that, we are going to do some hot takeage on who we think are the top five characters this season. Again, there's a lot more to explore. This list can and probably will change over time, but it's fun to start digging in now and saying, all right, it looks like so-and-so is gonna be a top five or a strong candidate. We have five characters that we've agreed on, and then we have a couple of more that are definitely worth discussing a little bit. So I think we should start off with the attention black hole that is Akuma. He's just got this gravitational pull right now. Everything is Akuma. So uh, I, he is indeed on our list for potential top five spoilers. And we'll start with him. Steven, I'll turn it over to you. What are you seeing with Akuma thus far? Yeah. Um, unsurprisingly, I think nobody's going to be shocked to hear any of what we're about to say today. Um, Akuma seems really good. Uh, again, from the trailers oh. that we saw. Yeah, right. I mean, that's a shocker, right? <laughs> he seems really, really damn good. Um, he's got every tool you could potentially want in a, in a character. He's got mad damage output, especially burst damage. Uh, he's got great normals. He's got great mobility, command throw. I mean, you name it, he's got it. Air fireball pressure is incredible. Um, He's he's Akuma, <laughs> and uh, you know we we talked uh, we did a video a little while back before Akuma was actually released to talk about like how could uh, Capcom potentially regulate this character? Um, right. And there are definitely those things in there. I, I kind of I'm scared to think what that character would have looked like had Capcom not put some of those regulations in there. Um, but right now it's seeming like this character is he's he's likely a top five character again. It's still early, but. Most people you ask are probably going to say that, and it's probably a safe bet right now. Uh, he's got so much going for him. The health stuff is definitely a thing. His lower health is definitely a factor, but as always with Akuma, how much of a factor? Probably not the biggest deal. Um, it's 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 a thing, but his offense is so good. Uh, the meaty setups that he gets off of all kinds of things. I mean, he's... He's a really strong character, but uh, but John, you've been playing this character a bit since he released. Yeah. Uh, what are you seeing so far? I would be surprised to find that Akuma was not a top fiver in a few months time. Now that said, right now you are seeing a ton of different top level players playing this character and people don't really know exactly the approach and I, I would, let me preface it by saying this, his greatest asset in his diversity of really high powered tools is also perhaps his greatest, I don't want to say like nerf but uh, uh it makes his learning curve high because of course all characters you have to be cognizant of these things but with akuma it's especially true because not only um do you have to pay attention to you know where the health bars are at where the drive gauge is at you do not want to burn out with akuma let me tell you something um but like when you get his b and b you can go into that tatsu you have options immediately you can go for the sweep and then you can do a forward jump for a safe jump or you can double dash for some pressure um or you can just go for dp instead of that sweep and take a little extra damage and you have to be constantly cognizant of so many moving parts. He's got so many options and so many approaches. Do you want to return to playing neutral because he excels there? Do you want to go for some rush down and be a little riskier because he excels there as well? But if you screw up or you have a brain fart or you freeze up in the middle of a combo and you either spend too much meter doing too many drive cancels or you do the wrong combo and you drop it, that's your ass. And it's a big deal with this character. So we're seeing a lot of different players approach the character very differently. Daigo is going to be more reserved. You can tell he's more about the neutral. He wants to land those stray hits that the you know get you with a shimmy, get you with a standing heavy punch and convert. Tokido is probably more like I want to push you to the corner and I want to explore the offense in the corner. Um, and, and there's like everything in between right now. So 
there's so much to explore with him. But that said, it's even at this early stage, incredibly clear that he can do just about everything really, really well. And I think of season one, Luke, where what it felt like with Luke was when he gets you that tag, he takes you to the corner and then his mix up game there is, is incredibly strong and the damage output is, is crazy and his options there are are really in his favor it's like you might weasel your way out but a lot of times a lot of the things that luke is doing it's like he's playing rock paper scissors and he gets to go twice you know and it's like <laughs> your chances of actually escaping are are not all that great and when it doesn't go in your favor man he's hitting you really hard there's absolutely shades of that with akuma but he's not forced to play that way. So um, that's why I say I'm, I would not be surprised at all to see him as a top fiver. I, I, more than that, I would bet money that he's going to be <laughs> a, a top fiver um, because of all of the very obvious things. But like we're seeing, he does have a learning curve. You do have, I mean, you can get by on just doing the most basic stuff, but that's not a top five version of Akuma. You're right. gonna need to optimize him. And we're gonna need to see the machine-like players really understand this character and then like let's let's see what happens with akuma come like evo right what's a what the likes of tokido and i'm sure others are going to be doing with this character the set play that they're going to figure out there's so many things that he could do and it's and, and i don't know that there necessarily is a best or most optimal approach to him i think it really depends on the situation and the character and where the meters are at but the fact that he has an answer for each and every one of those situations is always a good thing yeah well and and uh, that's a great point i wanted to touch on as well is where you, you said that he definitely has more of a um there's a technical learning curve to him for sure uh to to optimize him but he's also so strong at the entry level that you could learn a couple of quick setups and they're strong enough to carry you in the lower ranks for a good while. I mean, it's uh, obviously sure. this is, you know, a couple weeks in, everybody's still learning how to counter this character properly and all that stuff. But in your general ranked, if you're playing and you're playing Akuma, like you can get by with a handful of things and go, okay, like I know he has a hundred options here, but I've got two setups. Here's a meaty setup. Here's a safe jump. And you can kind of get by with a lot of that because he's so Absolutely. strong right now. And that's super interesting because like, I started playing him a little bit more like I've been in training mode with him for the last couple weeks and stuff and started actually getting into real matches with him in ranked and stuff and kind of learning on the fly kind of using some of the stuff I found in training mode but I kind of resorted to a couple different things and it was like you know I wasn't winning everything but I was definitely winning like you know I was like hey I'm, I'm getting quite a bit of success out of this and this is like you know I'm, I know there's way more options here and there's more optimal stuff but like the stuff that he has on the entry level is also pretty tough to deal with at the lower levels. Like, you're not going to get by with that stuff in higher ranks, and you're definitely not going to see, you know, the top players, Tokido, spamming that stuff in, in, you know, the top eight and winning, right? But, like, at the right. lower levels, that stuff is, is pretty darn strong, and you go, well, that's Akuma, right? It's like, yes, he's got the learning curve if you want to optimize him and get really good with him, and that's the other thing we need to discuss here, too, is that we're in the early days of Akuma right now. He has so many options, so we're seeing people struggle with him because we don't know how to fight him yet but also you know eventually we're going to see like two three months in the akuma landscape is going to look very different because we're, we're going to start seeing some stuff exactly like, right i i am getting away less and less mm -hmm. with crouching medium kick into drive rush cancel on block because people are beginning to dp there just go for the mm -hmm. exit now now he can do that into standing jab but you're spending three bars to go from that into standing jab mm -hmm. uh, uh not so much so little things like that he's going to get away with less and less yeah. um there's a lot of demon flip because like the demon flip has so much potential because he can go into the, the, the nothing he can go into the um <laughs> overhead strike that's plus on mm -hmm. block or he can go into the dive kick um, mm -hmm. and sometimes it can cross you up or it can go into the slide which is plus on block right and so when that comes at you especially the first time especially if you haven't put it under the microscope and gone into training mode with it you're intimidated by it and a lot of people just parry so i've found like hey i'm gonna just demon flip uh, above people's heads and if they don't whiff a dp trying to anti-air they usually parry and so i'll just empty drop mm -hmm. and then grab them and then i'm getting punish counter damage on my throw which yep. is awesome right but that's only going to work for so long that he does have some gimmicky stuff um, you can get away with doing air fireball stuff 
uh, you're you're gonna get a long way. Air fireball shuts people down because it's a horiz or it's a it's a diagonally moving mm -hmm. a hit box that's not attached to a hurt box in a 2D fighting game space. Throw that out there and then drive rush behind it. Every, they're just crouching uh, nine times out of ten. Your opponent's going to be down backing, and mm -hmm. so you drive rush forward with an overhead, and there you go. You've opened them up into whatever you want to do. That won't work as well as it is right now. People are gonna. I mean, there's already videos out i think we posted one on event hub's front page about how to counter akuma's air fireball with any character and what your options are people are going to have to become very familiar with that and before we start seeing the real side of akuma because he is going to be getting away with a lot of bs like that um here in the early times mm -hmm. And OD air fireball is also really good. Um, that mm -hmm. move, like I, I was using it a lot for pressure yesterday and um, had people trying to uh, drive impact it. And because in my brain, I see drive impact and I'm like, oh, they're going to blow through these two hits and then I'm going to counter DI, right? And I did it like on muscle memory. I did it like four or five times last night. And every time the OD fireball just beat their drive impact completely clean. Because it so, hits three times. Yes. And I'm just there whiffing a drive impact. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. Like, it's that good that it beats drive impact outright. I don't even have to drive impact myself. And it's like, even that was kind of tripping me up. Or like um, doing the demon flip into slide and having that be plus on block was like bizarre to me because like normally in in past games when you would do that like it's punishable so i would always think okay i have to wait i'm getting punished right so i keep doing it and then i would wait but i'm like wait i'm at advantage here like why am i not pressuring after this like so yeah. he has little things like that but that are also really good that like are going to get explored more and stuff like that but you know again like two three months in like or after he, his release we're going to be seeing um some of the pros really dialing in this character and getting his setups really tight and getting all those crazy meaty setups that he has he can uh he can bait wake up drive reversals really well and get meaty meaty medium buttons and get big combos off of that i mean we're gonna see all that stuff getting way more dialed in uh so i'm very curious mm -hmm. to kind of see i imagine at the lower ranks people are going to start being able to handle him a little bit more as we learn how to fight him but then at the top levels we're going to see some of those you know the tokitos out there that are going to become that are already specialists with that character that are going to just dial this stuff in and it's going to become really tight and I think it's going to be hard to beat at the highest levels. Absolutely. So expect big things from Akuma. No surprises there, but he's definitely on our top five right now for season two. Um, okay, so a character that when we first had this conversation, we didn't have him on this list. But as we began to have the conversation, we're like, wait a second. How is this character not on this list right now <laughs> and you were the one that kind of broke into mm -hmm. this so i'll let you kind of take charge here ken ken is a top fiver in our season two predictions list right now why because ken was already strong in season one uh that character for a good while uh we always called them the big three in season one we had jp we had luke and we had ken they were the three most consistently uh, common characters we would see in, in tournaments. Uh, they were notoriously strong. Everybody knew it. Uh, and then we had a bit of a, a bit of a, a propaganda going out of uh, Ken being not in the top five, maybe not even being top ten. And it was from Ken players. I'll just say that. <laughs> Shocker. Um, but people started to downplay that character quite a bit. And some people bought into it. I think I even started to buy into it a little bit. I bought into it. I put him at fourth instead yeah. of, instead of <laughs> yeah. in the top three when I was doing my final tier list. Exactly. So, dude. Yeah. And so I, I kind of bought into it myself as well. But then looking at the season two patch notes and looking at everything, I'm like, that character didn't really get nerfed that much. Like he, he <laughs> lost some things in like uh, the, the timing to hit confirm on his standing medium punch target combo is a bit tighter now. So it's, it's harder to do. Um, but he got some other things like he can now combo crouching medium kick straight into running uppercut and now he gets better Oki after that Jinrai kick got buffed and that's like one of the most common things that Ken players use that they abuse and, mm -hmm. and it's hard to Heavy stop. Heavy Jinrai kick has a smaller hurt box and a bigger hit box so he can use it more effectively in the neutral. Dragon Lash didn't get nerfed at all, and that move still hits you when you're jumping away from it, which is still so bizarre to me, and I've had some really weird interactions with that move before, where like, hitting Lily standing medium punch straight at the eye level where that move is coming, and he still goes over it and hits me, and it's like, that move still didn't get nerfed at all, and I looked at his patch notes and I'm like, 
This character is still ridiculously good, and of the big three, he got the least nerfs, and he got buffs on top of things. So it was him, he got the least nerfs, Ken was kind of in, or I'm sorry, Luke was kind of in the middle where he got some nerfs and some buffs, and then JP got the most nerfs, right? But it's like, I was looking at the patch notes, I'm like, Ken's still really good, and he's still, he didn't what get that he lost, much. Right? Yeah, he hasn't it's lost like much, his, and he his... gained. Yeah, his hit confirm with his, uh, like you say, his is a chin breaker. Um, his target combo is mm -hmm. a little more strict, but it's like, yeah, okay. And Are you supposed his... to be able to hit confirm the second hit of that, or is it more of a you see that it hits or not, right? Yeah. And, and then the um, um, his and... OD fireball scaling now starts at twenty percent, which is was meant to be a correction for throwing OD fireball from full screen and drive rushing in because that was way too strong of a tactic. Most times you're either mm -hmm. getting, you know, opened up with a throw or you got tagged by it because it was so fast and then he gets a full combo. Uh, so that made sense, but they even buffed his fi his regular fireballs where they reduced the hurt box on his, um, on his arms when he throws them. Uh, and I just go, well, I mean, and let's not also forget that Tokido just won uh, Ballerina Melbourne Bam. 14 with Ken. And people thought he was going to play Akuma, but he stuck with Ken. And it's like... And that tournament was massively stacked. That tournament was rivaling the likes of what we saw in the LCQ for Capcom Cup in terms of competition. That like, that was not there. nothing. <laughs> that was a big yeah. deal. Yeah. And so, I mean, I yeah. looked at that character and I went, how come he's not in our top five? And I'm like, this character was already tried and true in season one and only essentially got better here in season two. You know, we some of the characters on this list that we're going to talk about are they've kind of squeaked in now because some of the the other top tiers kind of got nerfed but i'm like Ken's well, got buffs to his run by the way like we talk yeah. about not being able to confirm with the uh, target combo but now he's got low forward into run mm -hmm. into dp and that dp now gives him better situations yes. afterwards so yeah like like you're saying i think what you're getting at is just that he was already at a certain level he really didn't lose much mm -hmm. and he gained a decent bit to make up for what he didn't lose too much of and you go like just the unless a bunch of other characters skyrocketed past him and i don't think that they really did he's got to be somewhere still in the top five yeah and, and i think some of the contributing factors as well outside of just the the downplay uh, campaign that went on uh, I think a lot of people got caught up in the hype of Akuma, and then they got caught up in the hype of Ryu's buffs as well. And, you know, looking at that and going, well, now Ken's not even the best Shoto anymore because these two are going to be ridiculously good. I think people kind of slept on Ken and forgot about him, but you look at those patch notes, man, and you look at that big win over the weekend, I go, he's still here, man. I don't know where people think he went. He's he's right there. I don't see him as a bad Shoto at all. Uh I don't even think he's, I mean, I don't, wouldn't say he's the worst Shoto at all either, but like, man, he, I think he has to still be somewhere in the top five. I remember, I mean, yeah. I remember thinking uh, right when the patch came out that, oh no, Ken's going to be the worst Shoto mm -hmm. all of a sudden. What world are we living in? I have a theory on Shoto changes for season two, and that is that we talk often about how other Shotos will... First of all, Shoto players are often fickle. They'll play whomever the best is. Mm -hmm. And beyond that, Capcom is now aware of, especially how much like we'll talk about it, other people will talk about how, why play Ryu when Ken exists? Mm -hmm. Why play Ryu when Luke exists? Why, or when Akuma exists, when he comes out, right? But that idea that people are gonna flock to the strongest Shoto, I think Capcom was very cognizant of when they were making this update. And so you can see, even in their, their, their own language, they say, like in Luke's changes, we took away some of his key things, but we made up for it over here and they were very careful not to over nerf any of these guys ryu got is, is one of the biggest winners of this patch um ken lost some things kind of but then gained other things and i think what they're trying to do is yeah we're gonna release akuma he's gonna be amazing but we want to make sure that people have reasons to play the other shotos and that's kind of scary when you're talking about making sure that people are rivaling akuma because of what akuma is going to be naturally speaking but i think it's a real good time to be a shoto player no matter mm -hmm. who you play and, and Ken is, is definitely part of that. Um, I was trying to look into why it is that Ken was already a, a very strong character. We've talked about this before, but really briefly, he has a lot of ways of pouncing on you in the neutral, right? You, you talk about uh, Jinrai kicks, you can just regular footsies, um, his dragon lash, you drive rush in, jump, all the standard stuff, anything there, like any hit that he gets on you, 
including off of a perfect parry that he does, mm -hmm. he can take you to the corner. And then Ken, I think is, correct me if I'm wrong, in the conversation for having the best pressure in the game, right? He's locking you down constantly. He's making you guess. He can still do everything that anybody else can do in terms of shimmies and throw loops and pressure. But then he's also got stuff like uh, the Jinrai kick mix-ups and... and um, a, a lot of really strong normals. They all convert, you know, and, and so I'm like, this character is extremely good at initiating, taking you to that corner, even if it's a coast to coast situation, mm -hmm. and then taking advantage of, of an already incredibly strong situation. And he's one of, if not the best at doing that. Mm -hmm. That's why Ken is a, by himself, a, a, an extremely strong character. And he's still absolutely capable of doing that here in season two. Yeah, and he also has some of the higher level techniques that we see with top tiers in. He still has throw loops, even though after the Ed update, you had to like manually time them. God forbid you have to mm -hmm. actually manually time something. Uh, you still get throw loops with him. Uh, he has uh, side switch combos where he can get damage and get That's out of the corner, too. which is a big one. Yeah. He's got uh, six frame medium buttons so he can punish uh, wake up drive reversals and regular drive reversals uh, harder than some other characters can. I mean, this character just has everything that you could want in the top tier. He's got it as well. And you just go, I don't I don't see where how come this character is not in the he, how is he not in the conversation for, you know, and he's definitely top 10. I'd have to say right now, I would bet money that he's top 10, but I, I'm willing to argue that he's a top five character as well. Again, these are early guesses, but right now I, I can't see how he's not a top five, especially after that big win from Tokido. <laughs> All right, so moving on a little bit here. This is an interesting one. Um, let me preface this by a little bit. Some characters were really far down the tier list and some characters were really high up the tier lists. Now, there's been a lot of changes. You know, you see like Jamie has a long list of buffs. Ryu has a long list of buffs. Aki, for instance, there's a, a bunch of those characters and you're like, there's no way those characters aren't moving up. Luke got a few nerfs, sure. There's no way he's not moving down. Maybe, sure. But the burden of proof here, if you are a character like Luke, whom I think was the best of the bunch, and not only was he, he wasn't on top of the mountain, he was in a helicopter hovering above the Head peak and of the mountain, shoulders in my above opinion. Everybody. And that, that's right? a common, that is a common opinion in the community. You see a lot of pro uh, player tier lists, and they have a complete tier above everybody else just for Luke. Like that is a That was a very common opinion in season one, 100%. So with that in mind, the burden of proof is to show that a character like Luke has fallen below five other characters. And the other side of this is like the burden of proof. If you wanted to say that Ryu was a top fiver, for instance, it would be like, yeah, obviously Ryu's way better, but you're going to have to prove that he went all the way from way down the mountain. He had a long way to go. So it's not to say that either of those characters couldn't go in or out of the top five. But as I look at Luke, and, and as we already said a little bit, yes, he lost some things on his like most broken stuff, mm. but he's still able to do what Luke did. He still has the damage output. He still has the corner carry. And some of his abilities, like is it a standing fierce, now went from negative one to plus one. His um, The damage off of his OD enhancements, off of his mm. OD moves, are, is, is now better, yep. right? Uh, he's got a, a handful of extra buffs to make sure that he didn't fall too far. And I go, okay, so if he was head and shoulders top one sure maybe he fell one maybe he fell two maybe he fell three with other characters coming up but i can't in good faith say that at least not with as much time as we've had here say that he's fallen out of the top five like that's gonna need to be proven mm -hmm. to me conclusively and we'll need more time so he's one of those characters that it's not unless he had absolutely like like jp sorry guys uh with his like two pages worth of nerfs i could like okay maybe he fell out of the top five with all of that on paper but you we'll have to see in time and even there's people that would even argue that jp even with all of those nerfs maybe didn't fall out of the top five but we'll have to see in time with luke his his alterations not going to be all that far from what we can see right now and he needed to fall really far to not be top five so i think he's a matter of fact lock for top five still yeah, and, and that's a that's a really good point that you bring up there, where it's like this character in season one was considered uh, head and shoulders above everybody else in his own tier, essentially above everyone else. 
if the nerfs really did affect him at all, because again, this is assuming that it actually did hurt him, because uh, he did get other stuff in exchange, and he's all, all around just a very strong character. At worst, he's probably now just among the top five, which is like, and it's not like he's clear above them. But again, he could still even be above them. We don't know. It's, it's, he was so much stronger than everybody else. It felt like that he's probably now just dropped into the top five. And the, again, and there we go. Like, if we were, ha if we had to make a bet, that character is probably the number one character that is definitely top five right now. Again, we need to kind of see how things shake out, but on of the characters on this list, he's the safest bet for a top five character, in my opinion, just mm -hmm. because of how strong he was in season one. And like you said, he got some stuff taken away, but he got some other stuff to, to make up for it. And he's still a very, very strong character. Yeah, he's he was he wasn't disabled. He was just differently abled in, in <laughs> other categories, you know, and like we'll see if that maybe that's a subtraction at the end of the day. Maybe that that equation equals that he, he lost a little bit, but I don't think it's enough to knock him out of the top five. So uh, not a ton more to say on Luke. I mean, he's one of those characters that's been explored to death because of how good he's been. So um, time will tell if he's never showing up in top eights and he's not winning tournaments and we're, we're and everybody's flocked to Akuma because why play Luke when you can play Akuma? Akuma, which I don't think is the situation here. I don't think that's the situation for maybe any of the Shodos. I think they've probably achieved what they're looking to do, if, if my theory is correct. Um, so yeah, Luke, Luke's still around, um, even if Mena doesn't think so. Okay, uh, this next one. Uh, this is one of the characters that I could be... Uh, he's in the bottom-ish part of my top five. Rashid. Steven, tell me about Rashid. Why do you think he's up there? Rashid. Um, so Rashid is one of those characters that was definitely a top tier in season one, uh, but he has the added caveat of he's he's definitely more technical this time around, where um, getting the optimal stuff out of what he can do takes quite a bit of execution, takes quite a bit of awareness, takes uh, conversions um, that you need to react quickly to. He's he's a bit more technical than you would think he is, which is good. I, I, I think I wrote that in our review when we reviewed the character um, on release mm -hmm. that like, it's nice to see that like he can still do all that stuff, but there's a ceiling now and you have to work to get it. Um, and we've seen players like Gacha Kun and stuff who are taking this character to the, the heights that you would expect them to take him to uh, because they're putting in that work, right? Um, so that's I want how us I to say when sure. watching Capcom Cup, um, I hadn't uh, you know, seen some Rashid, but I was watching Gacha Kun play and I don't remember who it was, but I, I leaned over to the person next to me and was like, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Gacha Kun <laughs> takes this whole thing. He's kind of just become mm -hmm. my favorite to win the whole thing because you can see, especially in the hands of a player like that, the potential of this character. It's like, ooh, that's good. And that was back in season one. Yeah, and that's a perfect segue because I believe Gacha Kun just won uh, DreamHack Dallas as well, which Dreamhack was also Dallas. insanely stacked. That tournament was very, very stacked. Uh, so we had Rashid winning that tournament uh, with Gacha Kun there. And um, yeah, this character to me, I looked at his changes and stuff and I went, he didn't get a lot in the way of nerfs, and the better characters around him did get some nerfs. And you got characters like DJ, who was also always in contention for like top five, sometimes top three. He got really nerfed, and so with him dropping it, and some of these other characters getting nerfed, like JP as well, I go organically, I think Rashid kind of moves up a bit. But even outside of that, he now has the ability to uh, cancel into any of his supers from his running slide which is very, very interesting because in Capcom's notes in the balance changes, they said um, they were trying to encourage players to use other supers other than level two because level two is That's so how they good. nerfed him, by That's the way. That's how they nerfed they him, They made exactly. his super two less appealing by <laughs> making his other supers more appealing. But even then, the way that they tried to make the supers more appealing is giving him a cancel from running slide. But now if he cancels into level two from running slide, he can get all kinds of other crazy mix ups that are insane. If you see them like he gets this, there was a story that we did on Event Hubs where he, we saw a triple drive impact combo from Rashid using that new change of running slide into level two. And you just go, OK, they just gave him even more ways to get level two out there and to mix people up. But this character, I feel like he didn't get a ton in the way of nerfs. Uh, and by other characters being nerfed around him, I think he's organically moving up. But if I had to say why he's a top five character, I would drill it down to essentially level two super. That super is so good. That it puts might, him over the, the over yep, the hedge. Right? In my opinion, absolutely. That super might be the best level two in the game. It could be the it best is, super in the game. Is. 
it yeah it is it is so good with what it does it, it shuts down the game everything. like it, it, from i mean maybe a few characters have ways of weaseling around it but even as a jp player back in season one i was thinking of things like okay if i can get a portal on the other side then mm -hmm. maybe i can teleport and get a but it's like that's that yeah. rarely works out it's more of like you have to perfect parry something that, that you know incoming and even yeah. then are you able to follow up on it mm -hmm. the the super just shuts down the game and you are playing at a massive disadvantage that you are probably going to get opened up by him um and even if you like tech the throw <laughs> that he's trying to open you up with mm -hmm. you're not in any better situation the super is still there it's still twisters and still coming at you slowly and mm -hmm. you've got to just deal with yet another mix-up and so I, I mean i'm probably i've probably gotten out of a hundred rashid super twos coming at me i probably got out of like three of them <laughs> you know without taking any damage yeah. it's just it's insane and, and we've seen some other crazy stuff where he like sends it behind him and and can, you know yeah. kicks it at you and all oh, this kind of crazy stuff but, and, yeah the the, the the utility that that super has it's it, the way that i described it to john to you yesterday was um it's like ed's level two super but just magnified by 10 because of everything else that it gets it it at its core it is a slow moving projectile that hits multiple times that is meant to occupy the screen and allow him the you know allow the character to pressure right that's what it's supposed and to it do. enhances him but it enhances his special moves. It enhances his movement. It can be kicked as a projectile, like, and it covers. It also covers uniquely uh, out, you know, over uh, Ed's level two. It takes up the entire vertical space on the screen, so you can't jump Ain't over. No it. passing it. Yeah, you're not yeah. jumping over it. And I just go, man, what? And in season one, he was getting two of them per round, which is, or in some rounds, he was able to get two of them. And that was one of the mm -hmm. nerfs that he received in season two was that he no longer builds super meter while comboing with that super out in play, which is, should have been the case from the beginning. But it's like, he still gets that super out. He can still do all the crazy stuff that he wants to do. He's got side switch mix up with his cart or mix ups with his cartwheel. I mean, you name it, he's got it. And I think that's what puts Rashid into the top five here. That super is so good and that's just one element of the character not to mention he's got a lot of other juice in other areas too it's not like his low that's forward all he does. is amazing yeah, he's he got a really good low forward mm -hmm. his uh his corner carry once he does engage with you is really strong I, his his projectile game is weird his projectiles move at it's odd angles and they're not yeah. so like they don't function in the way traditional ones do but he gets extra juice out of them you know he like, puts mm -hmm. up weird walls weird angles that can have odd interactions that he can often pick up from mm -hmm. um and he like I said, he's got combos for days you get hit by rashid especially near the corner he's juggle he's juggling you for forever and just when you think things are over he's launching off into a super one which he's probably built even if he was at mm -hmm. zero because of how long that juggle just was um and and that's another huge thing is in this game if you're you're if you are able to especially using all of your drive gauge um into like a super level one or two even if you can translate like more than uh, off of a stray hit more than like the amount of um, like the physical space the drive gauge takes up on your health bar mm -hmm. characters that can just lop that off from stray hits and like spend all of their meter and then end with a super that's a really big deal that's like a, oh man it was so close but not nope, got that one stray hit and it's it's over and it's like you don't even realize it because you feel like oh i have enough life to survive mm -hmm. and then they surprise you and characters like luke and chun and uh, rashid and aki now are characters that will uh, do that to you uh, dj is another one Mm -hmm. So um, he has all that. And then I have also that he's got really strong Oki mix-ups. Mm -hmm. He takes a little bit to get started if he's not using Super 2 to just skip neutral and, and put you where he wants you but um so so that is a little bit of a weakness but once he's got you where he wants you he's like you said doing the cartwheel for weird left right mix-ups and he's got the the he even says it mix up where he floats to you and then it's either an overhead or he can drop and go low or grab you he has absolutely the ability to snowball you once he gets that hit he's a crazy threat he's i think he kind of rivals ken I think has probably the best pressure is that Rashid's right up there in Ken's armpit. Um, so all those things add up to uh, he's really, really good. You put Super 2 in there, and I think that's what puts him over. If I were to take one of these characters out, he and there's one other that I think I would um, replace first. And again, yeah, it's early. We'll see. But Rashid, man, there's a lot to be said. And with him winning a major tournament right out of the gate, there, there's some evidence, too. That's, mm -hmm. that's like, yeah, let's, yeah, let's put him there at least for now.
Yes, exactly. And, and, and as you said, probably lower end of top five, mainly because not that he's not good enough to be higher. It's just the, the, the learning curve. Uh, you have to put in work to get there. And that does hold him back a little bit in the sense of like, he's not absolute number one in the game. If he was much easier to play, he'd, he might be number one in the game. Um, but right now, yeah, he's probably safest bets, probably lower end of top five uh, with potential to, you know, go a little bit higher, maybe. So we'll kind of see how it shakes out. All right, and then rounding out our top five, and we'll talk about a few other characters beyond this, but rounding out our top five is a character that I, as I've gone through this, she's been the hardest one for me to argue um, over others. And that's why uh, she's, she's still here, but uh, she, she might be out of the top five. She also might be like number two, and that's Chun-Li. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel like, so here's the thing. Chun-Li did get some notable nerfs, and that's what gives me a little bit of pause to go like, ah, with those nerfs, are you sure that she can still just matter of fact be there? Well, more so than I think uh, most other characters. And like, so she's got some of the best neutral control because she is such a footsie monster, which the character virtually always has been. Man, that buff to heavy punch though that's the one where she reaches all the way across the screen and shows dalsam how to do his moves yep. um that move has become better it's harder to whiff punish and it lops off your drive gauge like it's its job because that's probably its primary function now um chun li is very fast on her feet yes she received a backwards walk speed reduction but with that reduction she is still the fastest in the game save for akuma when it comes to walking backwards and then she's tied with jamie she's still faster walking backwards than anybody else oh save for level three enhanced kimberly who's then faster than chun li but it's like yeah, she's just not as the best anymore. <laughs> she's still really good with that. Um, she can be where she needs to be. Her low forward is ridiculous, amazing. It did get nerfed. I think it can, it, like the hurt box is a little bit bigger, but at the higher levels, it's like, how much are you whiffing, especially with a character like Chun-Li? Um, her conversions are extremely good. And while her, her basic combos are not the most hard hitting, she's another one of those characters like I was just talking about that can use all of her bar and go into her supers. So when she needs to dole out that round ending damage, she can do it from surprisingly far out or for surprisingly large amounts of health still left in the chamber. And she can get stray hits like nobody's business. And so that all adds up to a, an extremely strong Street Fighter VI character in general. Um, but what are your thoughts on Chun? Yeah, um, I like that you mentioned uh, at the top here that she's kind of a... Uh, it was hard to place her and it was hard to kind of put anybody above her. So I, I kind of look at this top five list as she's probably at the bottom of my top five list here. And this list is definitely more on the safe side. There are some big winners from the season two patch that could potentially be top five right now. And there is an argument to be made potentially that they take Chun out of this list and they get put in there instead, right? And we will talk mm -hmm. about that after this here because I'm gonna, I got a question for you on that front, but we'll come back to that. But with Chun Li, I feel like, again, she's a, another character that was already really good. She got some nerfs, but she got some pretty darn good buffs. And I feel like she's pretty tried and true. And to have her in the top five is definitely a safer bet. Um, and she just, she's still, again, it's, it's, you look at that character and go, she has pretty much everything you would expect out of a top tier to have. Plus she has dance cancel stuff where she can mix you up with that and go for overhead and get unique combos and things like that. She has, uh, ways of canceling that stance stuff into air, like to juggles with the back heavy kick and all of that. And, uh, or I'm sorry, with the kick launcher, uh, option from that. And so she's, she just has a lot of utility, still has incredible walk speed. She does, she does damage when she needs it. Um, I know that some Chun-Li players will probably take issue with um, the nerf to air lightning legs because she used to use that as a insane pressure tool of doing instant air lightning legs and it left her at believe plus on block or at least safe. Um, and it was great for baiting throws and getting combos that way. Now that has uh, three more frames of recovery on landing, so that's good. But they buffed the OD uh, air lightning legs, so they Combo's gave it a, better and leaves yep. her in a better situation after she hits it. And I think it recovers like 10 frames faster when it lands or something like that. So they're encouraging still doing that, but now you have to spend meter for it, which is probably what it should have been from the start. Again, some Chun-Li players are probably going to go, no, she needed the regular lightning leg pressure, but honestly let's be real here it probably should have been od from the start but stuff like that where i look at those kinds of changes and i go they regulated some of that stuff to me i go yeah that's 
that's not a huge nerf in my opinion because she still can do some of that stuff she just has to spend some meter for it now which seems reasonable to me uh granted i'm a low tier player so or i was we'll talk about that later but um i yeah i kind of feel like with that stuff it's like yeah they're nerfs but they're not they probably should have been like that from the start and then she got buffs to standing heavy punts and i go all right that that character still seems incredibly solid to me uh and she just has options for everything but similar to rashid you you kind of you need to put in the work and understand how to use all of those options and where but when you can she's she's a powerhouse she she has been in season one i don't see how she's not going to be here in season two short of other characters just you know flying past her because they're stronger which we kind of need some more time to see play out yeah i mean if jury or cami mm -hmm. were to fly in and mm -hmm. take that spot maybe or, with or, some time or Zangief. but i would have or Zangief. <laughs> we're not we're not <laughs> We'll talk about Zangief. Are we going to talk about Zangief We'll now? talk about him in a second. Okay, there, there is one character that... Uh, so, so Zangief is one of our honorable mentions. I don't know if he's... He's like... The burden of proof is to get him all the way from wherever he was into top five is a lot. So we're going to have to see more from him. But Absolutely. he's definitely notable. That said, the, the character that I think you might be able to exchange a few of these with is Guile. Mm -hmm. And so we did, ended up not having Guile in our top five, but let's talk about him as though he's like, he's in the on deck circle. He's ready to come in for somebody else. It might be that Guile's really good because um, his uh, his sonic booms now, he, he can choose which one, to, well, depending on which one he throws, he's doing more drive gauge uh, damage. And in this, in this season, as important as drive gauge was, back in season one, the ability to manipulate drive gauge seems to be an increasingly important part of the of the puzzle. Like if you can melt your opponent's drive gauge on block, that's a huge deal. And like it always was, but p characters can do that even more now. So it's becoming a more relevant piece of the puzzle. Um, Guile was already really good. He's always really good because he's just naturally like one of the best zoners, one of the basic zoning archetypes of fighting games in general. Uh, he's also got some pretty crazy combos that he can do. So uh, it's really going to come down to does that style thrive in this? And so we need some more time, I would think, to to see. He's right up there, though. He's in top five's armpit. I guess you might call that sixth, if not better. But uh, did you have any thoughts on Guile? Uh all the things that you said there 100 percent and then also um on this list it was almost number five chun li slash guile like that's how close it was uh we could interchange them and, it, and you know i'd be pretty happy with that because he's he's probably right up there as well uh but we just kind of need to see it in action um but yeah uh and again the, this isn't you know we haven't numbered these these top fives here uh but we do have some characters that we feel are probably on the lower end of it in in rashid and chun li um, but yeah, it's um, Giles also somebody to keep an eye out for because he, he's likely mm -hmm. going to be pretty darn good this season. Okay, so maybe not quite threatening top five yet, but oh my gosh, look out, Zangief. Um, I was doing a little research for this <laughs> and uh, was it Cat Cami um, or Aliette Faye, one of those two both awesome data number crunchers for the FGC um, we're, we're noting how Zangief's popularity in the higher ranks has shot up. He's like fourth overall and like I think it's like legends now uh, or maybe masters uh, and and you're feeling it too. This character got a lot and not a lot of fancy stuff. It's like it, he is a better character by far now but the things that he's doing are still sort of the things that he was doing. He's just a lot better at doing them now. And um, so for instance, he is lopping off massive chunks of your drive gauge when he engages with you. So even when he's next to you, if you're blocking, he's happy. If you're getting hit, he's happy. But he's benefiting when he's close to you. So what are you going to do? You're going to start parrying more. But parry was nerfed in this update. And <laughs> guess what happens if you parry and Zangief sniffs that out? You're losing half of your health to an OD spinning pile driver. Mm -hmm. so it's like that feeds right into what he already wanted to do. So you can start to see how these things flow into each other and enhance one another. Zangief uh, got some multipliers in some of these buffs that he has he's better in the neutral he's better when he's up close to you and he has more means of getting there uh but steven i know you're you're chomping at the bit to talk about zangief yeah first of all i love zangief uh he's really really fun to play in this game he was even in season one uh i never believed him to be that bad of a character i know there were a lot of people that had him like in the bottom like five maybe bottom two uh, a lot of people thought he was pretty bad uh, I spent some time playing him myself, and he's not only really fun, but 
he could definitely do a lot of damage and and when he found the opportunity he could make it count because landing one of those punish counter you know od spds was like just does so much damage it's almost i think it's like 3900 damage almost 4000 damage which is on par with some level twos i think some level threes actually if i'm not mistaken uh, closer that's to like an damage. od an od's like meter uh, or like drive cancel standard combo for somebody yeah it's it's massive at the, and that's only for two bars right so like they mm -hmm. had the the foundation for him built and then here in season two it felt like they kind of gave him a lot of quality of life stuff that made him more dangerous outside of just that big opportunity to get damage right so it's like as you were saying like they gave him the ability to to find those opportunities and create those opportunities more often in stuff like you know the standing medium punch target combo the the triple chop uh having less pushback on hit and allowing him to actually convert that into the full target combo from further out because that was a big whiff punish tool for him in season one and a lot of times if you were just a hair out you would hit the first two and miss the last one and then they would be able to punish you now from the patch notes and from what i've been seeing feels like that's a lot better or at least somewhat better where it's more consistent he can actually get it all and and you know knock you down and stuff and get the proper punish that he needed um but this character like you were saying just He's zapping your uh, your meter everywhere with with his normals uh, stuff like he his headbutt, his forward heavy punch got better, got more damage. Uh, it got it, it attacks your uh, your drive gauge and builds more super for him. Um, everything and then, builds more super everything. for him. He's and, yes. and, and like so, if you're a fireball thrower mm -hmm. and you're at this, the game changes as soon as that level two super is stocked. You've yep. got to freeze up against a Zangief. Mm -hmm. He's going to get there a lot faster, a lot more frequently. Um, every, like I say, everything flows for this character right now. And then in the Ed update, they added the ability to combo into level 3 super from uh, OD Lariat. Uh, they also gave him uh, more ways to combo into that with uh, his stomps now having like they can be drive uh, impact canceled and... I believe uh, all the cancels, I think, super uh, special cancel, super, uh, and then drive impact and drive, uh, what is it, drive rush as well. Um, and then, as you were saying, with the mechanics and stuff, Zangief also got buffed because not only does he now have uh, wake up drive reversal, which originally in season one, his best reversal was level two super. He needed level two super before he could have an invincible reversal. Uh, now he's got wake up drive reversal, which is definitely an option for him. And he can also, um, punish the whiffed parries now because whiffed parry uh now has a bigger throw box forward so now his spd range is even further if you're whiffing parry in front of him so now he can get that even better and he has a longer time to do it because the recovery is longer so if you're whiffing parry in front of this character he is gonna scoop you man his light punch spd range was already bonkers if you whiff parry in front of him it's gonna be even more bonkers you're gonna be taking so much damage uh, this character just got buffed organically through the mechanics changes. He got direct buffs as well. I mean, man, and we're seeing him everywhere in ranked. When we're playing online, he is, I mean, it is Akuma and Zangief right now. I don't know about you guys, but that is what I'm running into all over the place, like by a long yep. shot. And I think, honestly, I've ran into more Zangiefs than Akumas by now. Um, it is, oh, I haven't. I've, it's been yeah, like it's, it's, it's Akuma's yeah. super. Uh, it's Akuma's critical art. Every time I go on to, <laughs> or, I mean, yeah. it's Raging Demon animation. Every time I go into ranked, yeah. but Zangief is easily the second most popular. Yeah, for me, it's the same animation, but it's Zangief there instead of Akuma, and he's oh doing my the gosh. he's doing the Raging Demons. He's coming in, but yeah, it's. it's yeah, I'm seeing a lot of him right now. So, again, he's as I mentioned before. This list is more on the kind of safer bet front, and it is uh, look, we're we're talking about some of the tried and true characters here with the exception of akuma who is brand new and but is looking really strong and usually is top tier so he's still a fairly safe bet but let me ask you this john if you were to take chun li out of this list and replace her with one of the big three winners that we talked about in our last video uh who would you put in that top five again this is they're not tried and true yet they haven't been proven but out of aki ryu and zangief the three biggest winners we saw for season two the 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 patch notes who would you put in the top five out instead of chun li uh, out of those three if you're going with the risky bet i just projected myself saying each one of those and which one i feel most like a, my gut goes with and it's like i i, I don't know they're all three <laughs> mm -hmm. significantly better uh with this most i don't want to say because you also got guile right but right yeah uh, I, I i that's that's a really good question steven i have no <laughs> idea at this point because 
all three of those were were like bottom ish of the mm-hmm. barrel, maybe lower mid tier reused right around the middle, and all three of them have glown up crazily. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like I. I can I could accept any of them being there, especially with some time, and all three of them would need that time because of where they were. Mm-hmm. So, I, like, <laughs> if you asked me before we started recording, it was Aki. If you asked me like a week ago, it was Ryu, and now that we've started talking mm-hmm. about it, I feel like Zangief. So yeah. I don't know, guys. <laughs> like, uh, all of those, and then that's a good place to be. That means that mm-hmm. Capcom is definitely moving and shaking things up in a really positive way. So I'm sorry I don't have a, a harder answer than that's that, but good. like my heart does not agree with any of them over the others right now. Yeah, and again, that is a, you know, that is an absolutely understandable take to have. Um, and I feel the same way. If you would have asked me when the patch notes came out, I probably probably would have said Aki. Uh, a few days later, I probably would have said Ryu, and now I'm kind of sitting here like, it might be Zangief. Um, I've spent some time now with Aki, the new and improved Aki, and I'm actually trying to play her uh, as my main with Lily as my secondary, so don't freak out, guys. Still part of the Lily army, but uh, I've been spending some some time playing Aki just to kind of see what she can do here and um, and just get a taste of what, like, top-ish tier feels like <laughs> because I've been playing low tier all season one um, and just mm. for a better understanding of the game, right? I need to be able to play some characters that have some of those abilities, but anyway... Um, I think Aki's gotten significantly better, 100%. Um, she still has some things there that are like tougher to use, like um, well, not necessarily tougher to use, but you have to have your timing and your spacing really, really on point. Uh, things like her heavy punch uh, whiplash that um, her anti-air uh, can whiff still at, at certain ranges where you'd think it would hit. Uh, her regular anti-airs got better in standing heavy kick and crouching heavy kick, but um, still kind of tricky to use from certain ranges and stuff like that. So um, I think she definitely got a lot better. I don't know if I have her as the top five anymore, but she might even just, I mean, again, any one of those three characters we mentioned could easily be, you know, they might be top 10 now. And there might be an argument to say one of them or all of them are closer to top five. Uh, we kind of have to see how it goes. But um, to me, I think right now it feels like the most extreme the character of those three who got the most extreme changes is probably Zangief, and I feel like the upswing for him is the most extreme uh, because people were already playing Ryu a lot. He's always popular online, even if he's not, even if he's not that great of a character or he's not doing that well, he's always popular. Um, Aki's popularity is probably going to start rising, but we've seen Zangief just kind of spread like wildfire now, and I go, usually when that happens, yeah. that's a pretty good sign of. This character got an extreme, extreme hike up in the tier list. Uh, to see where he was before to, to where he is now, uh, in terms of usage and popularity and everything, I go, he might be the one I would choose right now in this conversation for the question that I asked. But again, as you said, could be any of those three. Could be Guile. Could be Jury. Could be Cammy. Like there's, there's a lot of questions here. And again, that is a good place to be because. It's looking like here in the early days, and I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves, but it's looking like it's not just going to be the Luke show and the Ken show and the JP show again, which I don't think anybody wanted. I mean, again, I know there were people who were upset about those nerfs. There might be people on this call who were upset about some of those nerfs. I'm not sure on this on this episode here. Um, but I think nope, generally more. speaking, we don't want to see those three characters just running everything again uh, for another season. It, it seems like Capcom made some of the necessary shakeups they needed here with season two but again time will tell it could be that we do see jp and ken and luke float back to the top over time and then we just have akuma added in there now uh but oh, i don't want to see jp that that character sucks i hate i mean he's really good and he's overpowered and i don't want to say like I, I, he well needs you're to an akuma to main akuma now hard, yeah, you... heartily yes exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly don't give him any buffs yeah he's he's yeah exactly uh, man you should nerf him more and buff akuma i mean that's that's where exactly. we need to be right so give Akuma his cane. Yeah, give him, give him <laughs> portals. Uh, yeah. I would say give him teleport, but he's got one already. So never mind. I, I think that adds up to a pretty interesting season two beginning here. Uh, there's, like we said, a lot more in the way of stones to unturn. There's a or overturn. Um, there's a lot more to explore and to see how things shake out, not only as we continually grind in ranked and in battle hub, but also to see how the big tournaments shake out, to see what the pros do, to who's going to realize the potential. We haven't even talked about the likes of Blanco's up there and the 
apparently got super nerfed, but hey, Problem X got was it second? Um, so. We saw Lily win a major. No, you we know? didn't. So nope. I don't know what. Cut, cut the cut the episode. Cut it off. Take it off the air. I don't know what you're talking take, about. Take that part out. Yep. Edit this out, please. <laughs> <laughs> Which automatically makes her a top fiver, I'm Easy. pretty sure. Top one, so, best in the game. Uh, OD right, Windspire right. is the most broken move in the game, and nobody knows how to deal with it. And it can't be, it can't be whiff punished. And oh boy, she's so good. <laughs> Point is, this is a very interesting season. I think we are all, we've already been excitedly at the buffet, and we're looking forward to going back and finding out what the other parts of it have to offer. Uh, and so uh, a, a pretty good look for Street Fighter 6 right now and hats off to Capcom. Season 1 was interesting. It had its faults. Sure, people were upset about certain things. Uh, I'm sure Season 2 will as well. But they have the game in a place where we are sitting forward in our seats. We are looking at a lot of different characters. We are having a hard time saying who's the best, who's in the top 5, who's in the top 10. And that's a really good look. And and like, you know, there's a lot of characters that were lower that we haven't discussed, Jamie and Manon and, and mm-hmm. Kimberly even, um, who have certainly gotten some shake up as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm happy to be a Street Fighter Six player right now. I'm looking forward to the future. And uh, yeah, do you have anything else that you wanted to say? Uh, just that I want to reiterate, this is early guesses here based on what we know and what we're seeing. These are not, a, this is not a concrete top five. We are two weeks in. We wouldn't come out and put out a concrete top five just yet. But we're trying to give educated guesses here based on what we're seeing and what we know. Uh, But please jump into the comments and do the same. Let us know who you guys think are the top five right now. Uh, And based on whatever you want on potential or what you're seeing, uh, just let us know what you think about the game in season two in general. Uh, We're curious to read your guys' opinions. But uh, yeah, it's um, the game's looking really interesting right now. It's still early and we could, you know, there could be any day now we could see a crazy bug or a tactic or something pop up that changes everything. But right now... With where we're sitting, the game is looking like it's in a good spot. It looks like a good start. Uh, And this should be a pretty exciting season. Well said. See you guys later.